Hello everyone, Rurikon here coming at you with another video and today we're going to be taking a very quick look at Tearaway for the PlayStation Vita. Now PlayStation Portugal actually sent me a preview code for this particular title so I'm just going to give you guys a very quick little tour and talk a little bit about the game and eventually in the future I will give you guys a more detailed, uh, you know, my usual first impressions with a lot more footage and all that stuff. Now, just before we begin, I would like to let you guys know that I had to switch a little bit uh, in terms of how I record the Vita for this particular title because it actually requires you to use the back touchpad uh, and the way that I usually record uh, PlayStation Vita, the, the back touchpad is completely inaccessible. The other thing is that this title makes a lot of use of the PlayStation Vita cameras. So that was another concern. That is why I had to switch things around. As per usual with PlayStation Vita games, the commentary is post. It is not live commentary because it is just a hassle to record PlayStation Vita at the moment. I really wish I had a better solution, but the PlayStation TV is not here yet. But that is what I had to say in regards to the disclaimer. So let's just get started on talking a little bit about the game. So you guys are watching some of the footage in the game, and I wanted to tell you just um, kind of how the, the objective of the game is and the, the general premise. So there's this character in the game who is a messenger. And he is created because basically the game has a message to send to you. So this character is created and he is the messenger. And his head is basically like the message that you're going to receive. That's why his head kind of looks like an envelope. Um, and basically you have to play with that messenger to be able to get that message out to the person who is playing. That being you. Now, the thing is... Uh, throughout a lot of times in the game, the, the character will actually jump up and actually get thrown close to the sun. And the sun is a, basically your face. Because whenever, the, whenever there's a picture of the sun in this particular world, you will see that it is actually using the front camera of the PlayStation Vita to showcase usually what should be your face. But uh, depending on how you're aiming the Vita at yourself and whatnot, it might it might be like the left side of your face, the right side of your face. But yeah, their objective is basically whenever, you, um, whenever you're playing throughout the game, they're trying to do a lot of interaction with you and get you to interact a lot with the in-game world. And that is pretty much the general premise of the game, is you're going through this world, the game uh, plays itself like a 3D platformer, uh, and you're going through this world and discovering all this stuff. I mean, for starters, you have this gorgeous art style. I really like the art style. And here's the thing. I'm usually not a fan of stop-motion animation, uh, which I believe is kind of the feel that they're going for here. But I don't know. I think that Media Molecule has actually did a really good job when, when it comes to the stop-motion animations that, that they do on this game specifically. Um, Media Molecule, as you guys might be aware, are the guys behind Little Big Planet. So they are the ones who are also behind Tearaway. And it's just, it, it's one of those games that I wasn't expecting. Like, I was like, oh, sure, I'll get into this game. I'll play a little bit of it and talk about it. But it's like, uh, you know, it's one of those games that I'm probably not going to get that much into. That was my thought process going into it. And I have to be honest, I really liked it because the animation is really well done. Uh, it is a game that knows exactly what it's trying to do. It's obviously not going to be the usual kinds of games that you guys see me play, like, you know, like action games and stuff like that. But um, it is a lot of fun. It is definitely a lot of fun. So there's uh, some, some elements, uh, like I said, where you have to use the back touchpad. Those will usually work kind of like drums. There's these drums spread throughout the game and you kind of touch the back touchpad and it makes your character jump. Uh, eventually, they actually give your character the ability to jump. That is not unlocked from the beginning of the game. Um, also, as you are going through the world, you probably notice that we are collecting these things, which are like little bits of paper. And those bits of paper are actually then used to unlock different decorations that you can use either throughout the world or in your own character. You can actually completely customize your character with... Um, with those little decals that you get 
Uh, my character doesn't look that great because I haven't spent that much time customizing it. But I gave him like uh, snake eyes and a lightning for a nose and then just like a derp mouth with his tongue out. And <laughs> I just thought it was kind of neat. And you can customize not only your face, but you can customize the entire character, like its body, like everything. Uh, there are several other mechanics, like uh, I've witnessed a mechanic where you actually mount a pig and you just ride along th uh, through the fields, and that was kind of neat. Um, and they kind of try to keep you doing different things at all times is also something that I've noticed. Uh, at some points they will have you draw shapes and then cut them with the scissors and like that will influence the world somehow. There's another point where basically you have to like make a pig cuter and I thought it was interesting because it's like th this pig had like this really big eye and then another little, little small eye so he looked really derpy and he's, they were like oh why don't you make this pig cuter and I'm like okay so I removed the smaller eye and I just stretched out the big eye and it was just like the cyclops pig and and the NPCs were like oh wow he looks gorgeous now and I'm like he does that's interesting <laughs> so yeah there's uh, some stuff like that there was there was also a part where they asked me to draw a pumpkin and let me just tell you that my drawing skills are not that great so my pumpkin is basically like a spiky ball with of something green on it. <laughs> it's just so weird. Uh, there was also a section uh, in this particular preview where they asked me to record like a voice sample, like a scary voice sample to uh, give to a pumpkin head, which uh, was going to be the head for a scarecrow. And then he goes and he just start using that voice sample that you gave it to scare people away. And it's just like, you know, it's kind of cool. It's, it's, it's one of those games that just reminds you that you are playing a game and that regardless of what a game looks like, like anyone can really enjoy a game. And then there's also these other sections in the game which where um, Media Molecule is trying to get people to do things outside of the game. And that is interesting because Media Molecule is extremely creative. And I, I always found that to be interesting due to the fact that with the success that... Um, that little big planet has. I mean, you just look at the amount of community created content and you can pretty much say that Media Molecule has been very successful in getting the community, um, you know, engaged in their titles. And now they're doing something with um, this particular title. As you can see, the title has a very uh, scrapbook feel to it, very paper thin like stuff just made out of paper and whatnot. So what Media Molecule has actually done is you'll notice, maybe you'll notice throughout the footage that I'm showing, that there are several um, situations where I actually take pictures of stuff. Uh, and these are basically things that are completely white, so they have no color. And you take a picture and the color returns to them. And usually when you take a picture of something like that, it will actually unlock the blueprint to make that particular model in real life. And then there's a, a website that they created which kind of syncs up with your PlayStation Network account. And basically, whenever you unlock some of that stuff, it gets sent out to their website. You go to their website, and you can download uh, images that you can then print and cut, and you can create the thing that was in-game. They, they teach you how to create that in real life. Like, you print a blueprint, they're like, okay, now, fold here, glue here. You, know, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I thought, that is awesome. Like, can you imagine just, like, people creating all these paper things from, from a video game? Isn't that insane? Not to mention the ridiculous customization you have in the game itself, not only for your character, but as well as for other things. Like, I decorated a pig, then I decorated a pumpkin, then God knows what other things you'll be doing. I mean, there's just a lot of depth behind this title. And on top of that, it actually plays well, because you'd think, like, well, it's got all these other cool mechanics on top of it, but does this actually play well? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. It plays really good. It, at least in my personal opinion. I mean, there's also mechanics in game like uh, you'll have to put your fingers in the back touchpad and then like you will actually make a hole in the game world. And here's the thing, when you make a hole in the game world through that particular mechanic, um, your finger basically comes up um, on the image and you actually see like your fingers coming up there. I mean, you don't see your actual fingers. There's like a 3D renderization of a finger, but it almost looks like your finger because it's pretty, pretty generic. And you're looking at that. And as this hole is formed in the game, 
The game is actually using the back camera of the Vita to show um, the back and the background of the hole. It's not the just black. It's not like your finger is coming out of blackness. No, it is actually filming the stuff that is um, whatever your Vita is aiming at. So it looks like the finger is actually coming from your world into the game. So there's a lot of um, interaction between the in-game world and your world, so to speak. And it obviously uses tons of features of the Vita. It uses the, the touchpad. It uses the fact that the touchpad is a multi... Well, not, not touchpad. What I mean is touchscreen. It uses the touchscreen. It uses the fact that the touchscreen is a multi-touchscreen. Same thing for the back touchpad. Um... It uses it in, in ways that sometimes you can have both fingers in there at the same time to solve certain puzzles. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's just quite a lot to this game, and I can't wait for uh, the full thing actually to come out to give you guys a more proper uh, first impressions on it. I just wish I had a better way to capture it. Once again, I'm really sorry because I know that the quality is not the best, but it is the best I can I can do for this particular title. And also, let me just tell you, the footage that you guys are watching in no way does justice to the game itself, which is unfortunate, but uh, I'm, I'm very limited by my means to capture PlayStation Vita. But the game, when you actually look at it on the PlayStation Vita screen, it looks so much better than what you're watching right now that I, I can't even explain to you guys because I can't capture it. But uh, anyways... Hope that kind of uh, gets you a little bit excited for Tearaway. I know that I am. Um, and um, let me know what you guys think. Comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one.